we did not get to talk about Team USA making their debut. We did not. They made their debut the other night. They beat Mighty Canada in a friendly. You're damn right we did. I love that we identify these international matches as friendlies. Dylan Brooks, the villain, the Canadian villain, making his uh, triumphant return to our screens. And I also saw a post-game interview with Devin Booker that he just like walked right in front of Booker in the camera. Really? <laughs> he did. It was kind of like a Brooks-Bryson moment. Remember when that happened in the interview? And then Brooks did like the eye roll of like, oh, God. Yeah. He just walked right in the camera. Booker, here it comes. <laughs> here comes Brooks right through it. Uh, what did you make of it? Because the Kawhi news happened at the back end of our show. We didn't really get much time to think and react to it other than, oh, Kawhi Leonard's out, and he's not going to play. KD didn't play, and there's rumbling he may be backing out as well because of his yeah. health. He wants to stay yeah, He's healthy. got a calf. They identified a calf issue. We never had any identifiable issue, although all the speculation is it's his, one of his troublesome knees for well, Kawhi. No Kawhi now. He is out of it. They replaced him with Derek White, which we mentioned on Wednesday's yeah. show and then the Jalen Brown stuff heated up later in the day. Jalen Brown has said a bunch of cryptic messages. Not so cryptic one to Nike of like, this is really what we're doing? <laughs> I mean, he's the best player on his team and he has yeah. two teammates who are on the team ahead of him. I would be pissed if I was Jalen Brown too. I think if KD goes they would have to give Jalen Brown that spot. I At that think. point, yes. I mean, I would have um, said that about Kawhi too. Well, yeah, I, I, I could see why many people One of the way. biggest issues whenever Team USA struggles in an international event is there's too many alphas and guys that dominate the basketball and you don't have enough role players or uh, guys that are glue guys, facilitators, defenders, those sorts of things. Yeah, so yeah. Kawhi was probably going to be out there more for his defense than the offense. There's plenty of guys on that team that can score and get buckets. Now, if Durant is not there, then I understand Jalen's a guy that can get buckets. Durant was a guy that can get buckets. That makes sense. Yeah, I would say about Jalen Brown, I think that's who he is on his own NBA team. I think he's a guy that defers a ton, and he's had to learn how to get along with multiple different stars, and he's had to fit in, and he has to deal with the whole, are you the number one, or are you not the number one, or are you going to be the guy tonight or not be the guy? I just, I, I don't know. He's He deserves a shot. He's the finals MVP. Uh, he had a better NBA Finals than Jason Tatum. He had a better postseason than Jason Tatum, but Tatum's the guy that gets the nod. I completely understand why he is pissed, and to me, that honestly, the last three days has been the biggest story about NBA or Team USA basketball going into the Olympics of one of the faces of the NBA that's just livid that he's not on the roster and wondering if it's his non-connection with Nike that's that's keeping him out. Well, it's definitely a part of it. I mean, it has to be, We right? can't pretend. Grant Hill did this. He basically was asked about the Jalen Brown Nike thing, and he goes, well, I, I was a part of uh, I was a Fila guy. Like, okay, in the 90s, <laughs> yeah. we're going to pretend that Nike hasn't grown in influence and... Yeah kind of controlling some of this stuff since you played? I mean, come on, that's kind of ridiculous. Things are a little bit different. Yeah. Um, I, I will I will go back to the, some of the conversations I had going into the Olympics. I think the guy that I'm most excited to watch and see how he plays and how we're talking about him coming out of it is Ann Edwards. Uh, I, I love Ann Edwards. I love his personality. I love the dog in him. Him saying, I talked about this again on Monday, Tuesday, when you were out saying, I'm the guy. They got to fit in around me. me yeah. I love it, dude. I, he, <laughs> everything about that guy, man, it cracks me up. I love his, his personality and his demeanor. He had a really good game against Canada off yeah. the bench the other night. And so he's just kind of the guy that I'm circling. A lot of the other players, and I, you would know this more than I would, I don't know how many of these guys have been on a Team USA before. I know obviously Embiid has changed, and so now he's playing his first. But a lot of these guys are names and faces that we have seen at multiple yeah, LeBron, Olympics Curry. over the years. Edwards, like, this is his debut on Team USA. And so watching him in the Olympics and seeing how he plays, he was great the other night off the bench. I, I You know, I thought they had a rough start in the first quarter, but I think for the most part, they kind of showed why they're the favorite. They didn't even play a very good game, and Canada's well, a good team. Well, they've only been yeah. practicing together for four or five days. And, I know, and, but and, Canada's a good team. Yeah. Uh, Kerr said, I think part of it is Kerr said he's using these games. He said, don't don't look into who starts any particular game. He's mixing and matching, and he's trying to find out the combinations of guys for whatever different scenarios uh, they play Australia and Serbia on Monday and Wednesday morning. They're going over to Abu Dhabi to start warming up. Both those teams are ranked in the top five in the worldwide FIBA international yeah. rankings. So uh, the trick, what I hope one of those teams plays at some point because they will run into it in international play is a flat-out zone. That usually is the downfall of the United States in the Olympic play. They're just not used to seeing zones in 
happening. Mm -hmm. They got to figure out the combination and how they want to attack it because what usually happens is they just fall asleep and just start launching threes. And if they're cold on any particular night, they're in big trouble. So that's the one piece I want to see is, okay, what are they going to do against a zone? How do they want to attack it? Are they going to use bigs? Are they going to go five out with some smaller guys? You know, Tatum or Durant, if Durant plays at the five and try to do it that way, that's what I want to see from a basketball standpoint is what's Kerr going to do when teams flat up zone him. Well, that coaching staff is loaded. Yeah. I, I, and I, I would expect Mark Few to be one of the guys that orchestrates the zone offense because he has to deal with it a lot at Gonzaga. I think my biggest takeaway is, like, I didn't think they played very good, and they controlled Canada for the most part yeah. after that Well, defensively, quarter. they once they hunker down defensively, an offense will come. But that but, makes me feel encouraged, I think, because, I, you know, you, there was a point in time when it's like there was no point in talking about this because they were easily the best thing, right? But it was a foregone conclusion. Now you watch Canada, and you're like, NBA starter, M- NBA starter, pivotal role guy, role guy, role guy. Like, there's NBA guys MVP all over MVP candidate. Yeah. Yes. You could see, you can quite literally watch the international teams and go, bunch of NBA guys, bunch of NBA guys. Yeah. Like, all you're seeing is NBA guys. And so now it makes it that much more of a challenge for them to figure this stuff out. But I thought it was a good yeah. start for them. We'll see what happens with Katie. If Katie goes out, you have to give that to Jalen. Derek White got the Kawhi spot. I, and one other thing that Piv, that kind of developed out of this was I thought it was interesting. People were asking and going back and doing the Kawhi KD stuff of like Kawhi having such a weird career, but like top end, who is the better player? <sighs> because KD feels like it should be him. But his career has also been kind of weird. We know he can score, but like if he doesn't go to the Warriors, does he have a ring? And then we're kind of saying, what about Kevin Durant if he doesn't have a ring? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in a way, he kind of protected his legacy by going to Golden State and getting those. The irony of all this, though, too, is that if Kawhi's not drafted by the Spurs, does he have a ring early in his career? Right. And if Kevin Durant doesn't get hurt, does he have a ring in Toronto? I the mean, answer to that is no. I think, yeah. I think these are all so, interesting things to talk about. We don't have to get into that now. I just thought it was interesting that it did develop. That's a tough debate. From some media. Out- and I was debating that in my head. I'm like, I think it's KD. Because they're different players. But damn it. When Kawhi is at his peak. Yeah, but offensively when Durant was at his peak. But Kawhi has a little bit of the LeBron. I'm just going to bully you. He does. And he can he's shoot a better a defender, too. Like, he's a better defender. Yeah, he's a he's better a two-way defender. player. But you might be talking about the greatest scorer in the history of the NBA. Certainly in the at conversation. At his peak. A yes. guy who could score at all three levels. As And the picture is going viral. I love him trying to pretend as everybody else is faking their height. That the team photo was released, and he's like taller than Bam and one other <laughs> Anthony Davis. He's like, dude, you're not six nine. You're talking about a seven footer doing this, man. You're not supposed to move like that.